Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make a ring light for a GoPro. I had this NeoPixel ring from Adafruit and I realized that it fit perfectly around the lens of a GoPro. I'm gonna drive this with an Arduino compatible Pro Trinket, also from Adafruit. Use a potentiometer just to select the brightness. It's gonna be powered by a cheap battery cell that I got from Amazon. I didn't need the long leads on the potentiometer, so I chopped them off with some nippers. Then for all the different components, I pre-tinned all the connection points. That just means putting a little bit of solder in the places where you're gonna solder later. It makes it really easy to add the wires when you're ready. A potentiometer is a variable resistor. You do power in from one side, ground on the other side, and then the lead in the middle sends out a different voltage based on how you have the potentiometer turned. The NeoPixel ring has power, ground, and a data input. I connected the powers and the grounds between the NeoPixel ring and the potentiometer. Then I connected those to the ground and the 5 volt power on the Pro Trinket. This is just for prototyping, they'll be put in better later. The middle lead of the potentiometer is connected to an analog input so I can measure a range of values. The data input from the NeoPixel ring goes into a digital pin. That's all the wiring, now let's look at the code. This is just a modified version of one of the example sketches that comes with the Adafruit NeoPixel library. First you include that library, then you set the number of the digital pin that you connected your data input to, then you set the number of pixels in your ring, the number of the pin that you connected your potentiometer to, and then the code actually runs in a loop. This loop is pretty standard, but I made a couple of changes. First, I read the value from the potentiometer using an analog read with this line right here. This analog read is gonna return a range of values from zero to 1023. So I use the map function to convert that number to zero to 255. And that's because 255 is the max brightness for each one of the channels in an RGB LED. When you set all three of those numbers to the same value, you get white light. And so as we scale all those numbers at the same time, we can change the brightness of the white light. Now if you wanted to expand this, you actually could change the color easily with just some more physical controls. I uploaded that code to the Trinket, and then it was time to try it out. This battery pack puts out 5 volts, which is exactly what the Trinket needs. Plug it in, and it was working. You can use the knob to change the brightness. Next I just had to figure out how to mount all this to the GoPro. I used some cheap digital calipers to measure all the different parts of all the different components and recorded them in my notebook. I wanted to 3D print an enclosure and a diffusion ring for the lights and this is the first time I've done anything like this, the first time I've used any software to make a model from scratch. I used 1-2-3D design and it's really easy and it's definitely worth you guys checking out. After I had the model made, I put it into the slicing software that came with my printer, laid it down so it would print the correct way, and then printed it. I do have a video coming at some point about this printer specifically because it's a fantastic printer. For this project I decided to use some transparent filament and this would act as both the case and the diffusion ring for the LEDs. This printer makes really really high quality finished prints and I just had to take away some support material and trim off a couple of little small spots and it was just ready to use like that. I went through several iterations of this piece because I didn't want to cover any of the buttons or the ports on the GoPro itself. The potentiometer and the trinket go underneath the GoPro, but the ring has to go on the front of it. I made some slots and some holes to feed the wires through. That would help it sit as closely to the camera body as possible. I fed all the wires into position and then cut them down to length and stripped the ends. I soldered these up just like I showed you before to get the power and the grounds connected to the potentiometer. I made a couple of little pins on the bottom of this piece that snap right into the holes on the trinket. Then it was just a matter of connecting the rest of the wires to the trinket itself. Since I pre tinned these holes, it was really easy to get them soldered in place. And finally I added a knob to the potentiometer to change the brightness. I slipped it right onto the camera and then powered it up to see if it would work. Works great, now to try it in the dark. So this actually works really well and is way brighter than I expected it to be. You'll notice there's kind of a blue tint to it and that's because this footage is straight out of the GoPro, unaltered, and all the footage from the GoPro seems to have a colored tint to it before you correct it. It even works really well outside even though it has kind of a horror movie look. 
This thing was a lot of fun. I had a great time figuring out all the little issues that it had to make it work. One, I had to figure out how to mount all the electronics underneath it so that they didn't cover up any of the buttons or any of the ports on the GoPro itself. Two, I had to figure out how to get the lights as close to the body as possible and make sure that this light on the surface didn't cause lens flare on the lens itself. And three was the biggest thing for me. This is the first time I have ever 3D modeled anything to 3D print. So there was a big learning curve of trying to figure out which software to use, how to translate an idea and some measurements into a 3D model, and then hoping that that 3D model would print and attach to an actual real world item. Well, it turns out that it's actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be as long as the measurements are precise. I realized I didn't show any of that design process in this video, and that's because honestly I was learning the software and I messed up a whole bunch of times and all that, so I didn't think it'd be very interesting for you. But next time I have something to design, I'll actually do a video about how I construct this shape in the 3D software. It's a lot easier than you probably think it is, and the software that I was using is free. It's called 123D Design. I'll have a link for it down in the description. You can check it out. There's a bunch of other options as well, but that's just what I tried for this project. Now, if you want to download this model to use or improve, I will put it on Thingiverse, put a link to it down in the description, as well as links for all of the electronics pieces that I used. I hope you like this project, and if you did, let me know in the comments below or at IlikeToMakeStuff.com. I totally understand that this is coding, electronics, and 3D printing. Those are things that not everyone is interested in, but I hope at least one of those things sparked an idea in your brain or at least gave you something to check out more information about. I've got a lot of other types of projects you might be interested in, so be sure to check those out. And if you want to see behind the scenes stuff or what I'm working on next, be sure to check me out on any of the social networks. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.